Okay, so what's this guy? Sh what's the system used to find the length of the nail? Okay, does anyone know? It's not. It's not necessarily uh, inch, the nail system. Okay, what what it is is it's called the penny. Okay, so it's the penny system, and it's represented by the lowercase d. Okay, so that's we're gonna go over that why it's the penny system. Okay, because some of you guys are getting to that point where you're starting to, to assemble, so we're moving into our next unit. Um, fasteners, okay, so like screws and nails. We're not going to spend a bunch of time, okay, um, but we are going to go over some basics so that when you guys, if you end up, you know, doing any home remodeling or, you know, basic just projects, you know what to do and what the talk they're talking about. So when you go into a store, or something that when they ask you, know, what are you trying to do, you can at least explain to them or say, this is what I'm looking for. Um, so I'm not expecting you guys to be, you know, nail experts identifying this, this nail, that nail, and all the other nails, and things like that. That's what we put in. But <laughs> oh yes, thank you. That was the first thing I wanted to mention. Alright, so first thing that I wanted to mention is that the earplugs themselves, okay, they're there just for well, the hearing protection, okay? Not for you know screwing around, throwing at each other, doing whatever, dicking around. Um because I've been finding them all over the shop, okay? And what that means is, you know, people are going up there and they're twisting it just to hear a click. Right? It's it's a clicking noise. If you want something that clicks, you want to find something that clicks. Okay? <laughs> that way you can you need a ratchet or something that you can spend all day. But leave those alone. Okay, only need them um, when you actually absolutely need to use them. Okay, so like when something's louder, a bunch of people are standing, things like that. Okay. Because they are there for a purpose, not there just to have fun. Um, the other thing is bathroom time, okay? So I'm not saying that you guys can't go to the bathroom. What I want to point out to you is. Shut up. Okay. All right, so how long is this class period? 46 minutes. 46 minutes. So if we were to represent this here, okay? Okay, we'll say that from start to finish, that's 46 minutes, okay? I end up talking about, you know, five or ten minutes, so probably about a quarter, okay? So, that time you're not in the shop. Last five minutes of class, we have, you know, picking up there, okay? Probably spend about, I don't know, five, maybe ten minutes waiting for a machine or like, you know, beginning of the day, starting to set up everything like that, okay? So, I said, figuring out what your next step is, getting your machine set up. Okay, so there's that much. So right now you probably have about 25 minutes. If you guys end up, you know, every day, you know, I understand that yes, there are emergencies that come up. Okay, but every if you end up cutting into your, you know, 10 minute bathroom break, you kind of go down to the bathroom. Well, I can't go to the bathroom here because someone's in there. So I gotta go all the way on the other end of the building. Okay? You walk down the other end of the building and you know what's going on as you guys are most likely texting as you're walking. If you're not doing that, then you stop in the bathroom and start texting. Okay? So, you know, that starts cutting in, say about 10 minutes per bathroom shift. You really have only about 15 minutes worth of work. So I'm not saying, you know, don't go to the bathroom if it's an absolute emergency. I'm just saying, some of you guys are starting to get into that habit where, oh, he'll let me go to the bathroom every day, okay? That's because I, yeah, I don't want to have people having accidents in the bathroom or in the shop, okay? If you have to go, that's fine, understand. It's human nature to have to go. But you can actually train, you know, you can kind of train your body, go at a different time. Also, you guys are in high school, so basically the reason why I let you go as well is because 
I'm assuming that you know that you're in charge of your own time. I'm not going to be your mom or dad or someone else. Here. You got to get going. Now, if you, it's your grade. I don't care. So if you want to, if you want to go to the bathroom every day, <laughs> I guess just ask me. It's fine, but just know that it's cutting into your shop time. Okay. So that's kind of the the point for the day. But we talk. We start talking about uh, the nail system. Okay. And they have the penny. So what, that's the main, the main point that I want you guys to know, like on the test. What system is used to identify the lengths of nails? The penny system represented by the lowercase letter D. Okay. Does anyone know how that system came about? What's that? No, it wasn't necessarily that. When they, in the older days, Okay. They used to sell them by the hundreds. Okay, So it used to be the cost per hundred of nails. So if we look at this one. Uh, flip. Flip. There we go. Okay, so this one here is about a three or four penny. I think it's a four penny nail. Okay, So it's a four penny nail, which means that back in the old days, that if I had a hundred of these, it would cost me only four pennies. They base it on uh, off of weight, basically. If I had this one, okay, since it's longer, it's bigger, it takes up more material. Okay, per hundred of them, it's gonna weigh more. So this one, it's a sixteen penny nail. So in order to get a hundred of them, I would have to pay sixteen pennies. This one, I'd only have to pay four uh, four pennies. That's the old system, okay. When you end up buying box of nails, they'll have the overall length of on, on them, like two and a half to three inches or whatever. But just know that when someone says, you know, go grab me a 16 penny nail or a four penny nail, okay? If it's a higher number, it's going to be a larger nail. If it's a smaller one, it's going to be a smaller nail, okay? The, the difference, okay, so this is where it's getting into, they're kind of getting away from it um, too. But does anyone know, these are... Nails. Does anyone know what type of gun? For an actual nail gun, okay. Those, um, if you look here, if I bring it closer, as you can't there it is. Oh, look. So we have probably like I don't know, 15 nails right there. Each each one of these is an individual nail, so those will get shot in. These are actually measured just in length. So this would be like what is this inch and a half, inch and a quarter, okay. Um, so you just buy a box of you know whatever gauge it is. And then you go from there, whatever length that you want. Okay, but for today, all I want you guys to know is that you have the penny system. So you have your um, the main parts that I want you guys to know is you have the head, okay, which is this round part, circular part right here. That's the head of the nail, and then you have your shank, okay. So the shank and the head; those are the main points. Now, guys, sh the shank, yeah. Shank. Like prison prison shank. <laughs> so you have you have the head. Sorry, I had I had nails underneath. I had to, I get distracted sometimes. And then you have the shank. Shank. Okay? Like Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank. <laughs> You guys ever seen Ace Ventura? Oh yeah. Okay. Golly. Okay. So the main part that I want you guys to know, okay, um, you have all these types of nails. Okay, guys. You have all these different types of nails. Like you have a roofing nail, your common. You have a galvanized case of nails. You have a double-headed nail. Okay, finishing nail. All I want you guys to know is that you have basically. A finishing nail, okay. So you can tell it's a finishing nail by its, you know, the thin, thin gauge shank or a smaller gauge, okay, and the head itself. Why would I want to use, say, if we're comparing our finishing nail to our common nail? Why would I want to use, say, our finishing nail rather than our common? Not look, not looking at length wise. 
it's like, oh, it's uh, not right. small, but finishing now has a smaller head, so it's harder to see. Yeah, so it's harder to see for that. Um, Aaron, did you have No. <laughs> Same thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, like, building this finish, you don't know a lot of like, you can thinner woods, you want a smaller, smaller uh, diameter, therefore, most of the wood is easy. Yeah, so that was gonna be that's gonna be my next thing. The, what I want you guys to know is you have your common nail, your finishing nail, and then last you have a casing nail. Okay, so the casing nail, what that's commonly used for is for actually like attaching in um, windows and doors. If you guys are actually go to like at home, a lot of you guys have a wood frame door. If you actually open up the wood frame and you have that, that rubber seal right here, if you pull that back, or you may actually be able to see it along the jam, you're going to be able to see a casing nail. There's, there's probably some putty over it to cover that up, but if you look along here, there's going to be the casing nails. And what that does is this gets into construction, but it attaches the frame of the door to your actual um, shoulder stud. Okay? So your casing nail goes through here. It's a little bit, the casing nail itself, it's a little bit larger diameter shank or gauge. Okay, so the shank part here is a little bit that, um, smaller diameter than the, the common nail, but you can see that it has a finishing head on it. Okay, so like Riley said, what you want to do, the reason why you want to use those is to kind of hide that nail. So in woodworking, just like we talked about um, with joints and everything, you want to try to hide your joints and also your, you know, how you're basically assembling because you kind of want to make it look like one piece of wood. Okay. Now, what we're going to be using, this kind of gets you another demonstration for this, is okay, we deal with pine. Okay, it's a softer material, so it's not necessarily going to crack as easy, but unless you get a knot like right here on your miters, Okay, you want to be careful of those because it's a denser material. So when you actually are taking out the nail gun, shooting those in, okay, be careful of that. Um, we'll talk more about that later. But another example is, does anyone know what type of fun fact of the day, what type of wood this is? Nope. Oh, okay. So this is oak. Um, this is actually a hard material, okay, so it's a hardwood um, that's based off the type of tree that But a lot of times when I take, if I were to take a casing nail or a common nail like this, okay, I pound that in, okay, you guys can see that it starts to split, okay, and the reason being because of the shape itself is such large gauge, um, it's causing basically, you know, a large diameter without a pre-drill hole in there in a harder material it ends up splitting it causing it to crack. So your better bet is to either pre-drill um, a hole, so actually making taking a drill bit and drilling out a hole before, and then placing a finishing nail in that. But we don't have to worry about pre-drilling when we have our miters for our sides because we're going to be using a nail gun and then we're actually going to be um, gluing and nailing it in as well. Okay. Um. Any questions on that? Okay. All right. So you guys can go ahead and go to work.